For example, I think we, let's see, let's enlarge that a little bit. There we go. I know linguistics, but I'm technologically challenged. So. Anyway, here we have the Hebrew on the left, um, three different words or morphemes, which is a unit of uh, words with, with meaning. The plural suffix in Hebrew is im. It's put on the end of words, just like in English we have s, dog and dogs for plural. In fact, this plural is in a number of words that you're familiar with. Uh, Elohim, for example, is a plural uh, corresponding to Arabic Allah. Eloh would be the singular, Elohim, uh, the plural. Um, Urim and Thummim, Urim, Thumim is a plural. Ur, light, Urim, lights. Uh, thum, perfection, Thumim, perfections. Um, anyway, the plural suffix in Udo Aztecan is reconstructed to be Ima. Now, some Udo Aztecanists will uh, argue with that. Uh, nevertheless, there is good evidence for th that. Uh, they would argue about the vowel in front, whether it's, oh, by the way, I need to tell you that the vowels, we're going to pronounce the vowels like you do in Spanish or most languages of the world. Almost any, if you know Spanish or any other language besides English, it's probably close to that. English changed them all. Anyway, um, the, the plural suffix in Udo Aztecan is ima, and uh, I talked with Wickmiller, the foremost Udo Aztecanist uh, before his passing, and explained all the evidence suggesting that, and he agreed that that's a decent reconstruction for that uh, uh, plural suffix in Udo Aztecan. There's also a passive prefix in Hebrew, ni, that's put on the beginning of verbs to make a verb passive. You know, I ate the apple, the apple was eaten. Um, in Udo Aztecan, there is, oh, by the way, that is also a reciprocal and reflexive. Don't worry about that. That just means uh, we did it to each other, you know, uh, like fight. Uh, I, I fought him, or he was fought by somebody, or we fought each other. Those are reciprocal and passive meanings that do overlap a lot in all languages. Uh, anyway, there's a prefix in Hebrew that, uh, I mean, in Udo Aztecan, na, which also makes verbs reciprocal and passive. There's also a verb which, uh, it's yashav in later Hebrew, but in originally it was yashab with a B, and it means to sit down, and it also means to dwell or reside at a place. Well, in Udo Aztec, and there's a verb, yasipa, which also means to sit down and to reside at a certain place. Now that's, uh, you know, those are somewhat close, im and ima, ni and na, yashab and yasipa. Uh, however, when we consider the fact that that the uh, Hebrew plural suffix im came from an older ima, ima is the original form, linguists and Semiticists can figure out that looking at the related languages that the older original form was ima. Then we see that the uh, plural suffix of the Near East and that in Northwest Semitic anyway uh, is identical to the Udo Aztecan plural suffix. Also, the Hebrew ni came from an earlier na. That uh, Semiticists know that. They agree on that. A identical to the Udo Aztecan um, passive and reciprocal and reflexive prefix. Also, the Hebrew word yashab changed its voweling at a certain time in the history of Hebrew, and it was originally yashiba. And the voweling of the Udo Aztecan verb is identical, yasipa, just a change from b to p. Um, very interesting similarities. Now these are only three similarities. There are about a thousand such similarities between the Uto Aztecan language family and uh, Hebrew and Egyptian. Now, I'm trying to decide how many similarities. We have lots of them here. Let's, let's get into a little bit further. Um, there are there are three basic sound changes. Now I need to explain here that linguists have found that uh, sounds change in consistent patterns so that this language changes this sound this way and this one changes it another way quite consistently within itself 
so that later this sound corresponds to another sound in the other related language. Uh, for example, Hebrew B in dogash positions, which means at the beginning of a word in certain places, a uh, change to qua in Udo Aztecan. Um, the saw, the emphatic or pharyngeal S, saw, changed to tsa. Okay, that C with a little hook under it, we're going to use to represent the TS sound. In fact, that's what it is, how it's pronounced now in modern Israel. Um, the R changed to Y or E, I, uh, another very common change in world languages. And keeping those three sound changes in mind, look at these similarities between Hebrew words and Udo Aztecan words. For example, the Hebrew verb to uh, boil or grow ripe, to ripen or boil, is bashal. The Udo Aztecan word is kwasa. Okay, it's missing the L, it's missing the end of the word, but uh, the B corresponds to kwa and the S corresponds to the S sound. Uh, the Hebrew word for flesh or meat is basar and other meanings. And Udo Aztecan, it's quasi. Okay, you, again, you see the B change into S, I mean to qua, the S corresponds to S, and the R goes to an E or Y sound. In fact, in some of the languages, the Y actually shows up. Um, the verb for dobba uh, in Arabic, but it would be sobba in Hebrew, um, means to latch onto something, to grab like a lizard. Um, now the double B, notice the double B, that would cause a qua in Udo Aztecan, and interestingly this corresponds perfectly, Udo Aztecan tzakwa means to close or lock, like it does in Arabic and Hebrew and other Semitic languages. Uh, it also uh, means to catch or grasp, like it does in Arabic. And one of the nouns coming from that verb is a word for lizard. Sob or bob in uh, Arabic means lizard. And in Udo Aztec and Sakwa also means lizard. So here you have a, an identical form that has the, all these three same meanings to close or lock, to grab, and lizard. Same thing that matches phonologically, all the sounds match, that also has those same three meanings in Udo Aztecan. Um, in fact, here are a couple, a couple of more examples. Uh, shiber, shaber. Shiber is a past tense. Shaber is the imperfect uh, form of the conjugation. Don't worry, if you don't understand all the words I'm using, we don't have time to explain it. But you can, you can just get the picture here. Anyway, shaber, sakwai. You see the S and lining up, the double B to the qua, and the R to the Y. Same thing with talk. Here are a few others. Uh, mayim is the Hebrew word for water, mem. Mem, mumma, is the word for ocean in uh, a number of Udo Aztecan languages. The uh, word for shoulder is similar. I'm just going to go real fast here. Uh, the word for shoulder, shekem or shikma, shikmo, if it's got a suffix. Uh, sikun, sikum, actually with an M sometimes, the capital N just means any kind of nasal, it changes according to the letter following it. Uh, singab, word for squirrel. If this word existed in Hebrew, it would match Arabic in a form of shigob. We don't have that word for squirrel in ancient Hebrew because there's no need to talk about squirrels in the Old Testament. But the sound correspondence is among Semitic languages themselves. By the way, Semitic, I might need to explain that term, is the language family to which Hebrew and Arabic and Babylonian and Ethiopic and uh, uh, the, the Semitic languages belong to. Uh, Arabic is closely related to Hebrew. Oh, and Aramaic, that'll be important in our discussion. Um, anyway, Sigob would be the word in Hebrew. Siku with a silent consonant at the end is the word in Yudav Aztecan. Uh, ga changed to ka, that devoicing of ga and da to ka and ta and but a pa in other positions is also uh, established with several um, examples.